Today, I'm embracing my Goan heritage on Cravings Food Adventures and making a delicious mutton shakuti. Hi everyone, I'm Karen Ahmed and although it is spelt with an X, it's pronounced shakuti. Shakuti is a popular dish in coastal Goa, which is in India, and it can be made with chicken, mutton, beef, fish, and even vegetables. Its flavor is deep and intense from all of the spices that get ground up together and it's mellowed out with coconut that's widely used in Goan cuisine. This recipe belongs to my very good friend David D'Souza who runs his own blog called Dusty's Food Adventures. Together we also run a group on Facebook called Traditional Goan Foodies together with two other phenomenal home cooks. If you want the links to the blog as well as the Facebook group, I'm going to leave it in the description below. Let's get started as we have a lot to do. I'm going to first show you all of the dry spices. I've got 10 red Kashmiri chilies. These are gorgeous chilies that you can find in most Indian grocery stores. If you can't find these kind of red chilies, you can substitute it for any other kind of dried red chili. The Kashmiri chili is about 0.1 ounces and about 3 grams, so you can substitute your chili accordingly. I'm going to make sure to clean these chilies and I'm going to de-seed them before I roast them. I've also got half a teaspoon of cumin seeds, half a teaspoon of peppercorns, half a teaspoon of fennel seeds, five cloves, two teaspoons of poppy seeds, and I've got two tablespoons of coriander seeds, an inch of cinnamon, two cardamoms, and one star anise. Together, I'm going to roast these and make a delicious spice powder. I've got eight cloves of garlic, as well as I have a cup of fresh coconut. I've also got two onions, and I'm going to chop up one rather coarsely because it's going to get ground up into my spice paste or my masala. And the other onion, I'm going to give it a medium dice. Now you can use shredded coconut if you can find it. Frozen fresh is great, just make sure that you defrost it as long as you're not using the dehydrated desiccated variety. And here I have two pounds of mutton and I've simply added some lemon juice and some salt. And you can see I have a great ratio for bone to meat in my mutton. The bones are going to lend beautifully to the gravy. I've also got some extra pieces of bone. I'm not gonna throw that out. It's going to go into my gravy and I'll fish it out later. All right. I'm also going to soak some tamarind in a little bit of hot water and it's going to get really, really soft and I'm going to add that to my gravy later. Let's start by roasting all of my dry spices. I'm using a large nonstick pan that has completely lost its nonstick properties and it's perfect for roasting my spices. I'm going to roast it just for a little bit. Don't let your spices burn because if it does, it's going to give your gravy a really bitter flavor. I'm going to leave my spices aside to cool and in the same pan, I'm going to add the onion that I chopped rather coarsely as well as the eight cloves of garlic. Once the onion and garlic have roasted, it's also going to pick up all of the flavors from the spices that were in the pan earlier. I'm going to take that and leave that aside to cool. Next, I'm going to add my coconut into the same pan and I'm also going to add some coconut oil. Now, I love cooking with coconut oil and I think it's so healthy for you. It's so on trend and it also lends itself beautifully to this recipe. I'm using three tablespoons of coconut oil. Now don't be afraid, it's not a lot because that is going to help the masala and spice paste blend beautifully. Using a food processor, I'm going to dry grind all of my spices first. I'm also going to add half a teaspoon of turmeric to the mix and I'm going to process it till it's a nice smooth powder. Next, I'm going to add the onions and the garlic and I'm going to add a little bit of water to help it along. I'm also going to add the coconut and all of the oil. Together, the oil and the water is going to give the masala enough of liquid to make a delicious paste. Just look at the color of this red masala. The Kashmir chilies help give this masala a beautiful red color. 
If your masala is not as smooth as mine, you can take it out and re-grind them in batches. I do have a really powerful food processor, but if your food processor isn't as powerful as mine, you might need to do them in smaller batches. And now we're ready for the chakuti magic. I've got my casserole heating and I'm going to add two tablespoons of coconut oil into my casserole. Once it melts down, I'm going to add the onion that I cut in a medium dice and I'm going to cook it just till it's got a nice and golden brown color. Next, I'm going to try and scrape all of that masala from my food processor into my casserole and just cook it for a minute or so. I'm also going to add the mutton and I'm going to give it a good stir. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to my food processor because I don't want to lose any of that masala. I'm going to try and scrape as much of that masala out of my food processor. As well as I'm going to add the tamarind that I soaked earlier, removing any seeds if there are any seeds. And I'm going to pour that into my shakuti mixture. Now it's a matter of cooking it. I'm going to cook it on a slow flame for at least 40 minutes. Cooking Goan food is a labor of love and you have to watch it and you have to nurture it and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep stirring at intervals, making sure that the gravy doesn't burn at the bottom. I'm going to add salt as well as a pinch of sugar. Throughout the cooking process, I'm going to add a little bit more water as required and you're going to see the shakuti change drastically in terms of texture. Hey, Everybody says to Makazai, why don't you baby hear them cry? Why, why, why? All right. Pula por in tu makamok tu zo. Musa un piong so taros tu zo. Out of control, zala ju homo zo. When it's ready to serve, you can squeeze some lemon juice over it just to kick it up a notch. Now this recipe is so great to make, you can even make it in a slow cooker or in a pressure cooker. Thank you David so much for sharing your recipe with me. I simply love it. In fact, when I eat it, I think about my grandmother and the delicious shakutis that she used to make. Please do visit my channel at Cravings Food Adventures. I do hope to see you again. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below. And until I see you again, take care. Bye. Come into my life, in my life, in my life, rock my world.